Broken English! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome to a Dayton Dissects of Stone Tales. A super, super lo-fi indie platformer game by Yellow Worm Studios, published by Black Shell Media. The, it's about two cavemen brothers, and it's uh, from the Spanish. So I think it's really smart that they made them cavemen, if you understand what I mean, because they use a lot of Google Translate. I still think the art direction's not bad. Obviously, it lacks a little uh, polish, but I do feel like I'm running around in a cave. You control both of your brothers with A and D, and then the W controls the, the big one to jump, and the space controls the little one to jump. So if they get separated, it's super, super hard to uh, leap across gaps and such, as you can well imagine. The big brother has a shield bash and a block, and the little brother throws spears. So, oops. <laughs> you can probably imagine that killing enemies is relatively easy. Fortunately, the gameplay is mixed up throughout the levels. Here, we're uh, hunting five rabbits. But there's no penalty for missing them. I'd like to see them run away. Ideally, I'd like to see weapon change up and inventory systems and all that stuff, but for a low, low budget uh, platformer, it's not bad. They do keep the gameplay mixed up throughout the levels, which I do appreciate. Yeah, this big bull's really scary if you're not blocking, but with the big brother there, it's, it's super easy. Unless you get flipped around with the little brother in the front which can happen by falling or taking a jump at the wrong time. And then you gotta kinda catch yourself on another ledge in order to get yourself flipped back around the right way, which is really unfortunate. There's also no resolution controls or things like that in the menu, which I don't like at all. So while some levels are relatively large, there's no reward for exploring said levels which I think is a huge missed opportunity, even if you don't want to have level up systems or inventories. <sighs> I, I just can't help but be a bit disappointed. I reviewed Apotheon earlier this year, which was also a, a, a Greek history pottery game. You were running across like a piece of pottery and in the dark spots, it actually looked like a piece of pottery, which doesn't happen here. It, it's just dark, which I understand if you're working on a budget, but um, I, I just see a lot of missed opportunity. I'll get to my score breakdown. For the controls, I've given it a 4 out of 10. As I stated, the menus are a bit troubled. Uh, controlling the brothers is a little bit troubled in its own way. Combat is relatively easy, um, so I'd say that that's pretty fluid and nicely done. But it's just a little bit difficult, more difficult than I would like to uh, to swap the brothers around. Yeah, here I have to platform a little bit with both both sides of my brain and shit. Oh goddammit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little bit frustrating, but I guess that's part of the the fun, the gimmick here. I still put it below the average because of the menus. Um, I want to change my resolution, honestly. Just let me make it windowed, or scalable, or something, please? I, I, it's not that hard. <laughs> Anyways, fun factor, I've given a 6 out of 10. Uh, it is a bit above the average. There's one level where the little brother's by himself running around through the jungle killing people with his spear out of watchtowers like fucking Metal Gear Solid, and it just feels so awesome. Um, and then... There is a lot of level to explore while you're not rewarded for it. I think it is kind of nice, especially on this bear level, that they're just like, yeah, go go have a ball, kill some stuff, take some time, enjoy the sights. Which is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, not really enough to save it. I put it a bit above average, only a 6 out of 10, but still not bad on the fun factor. The difficulty, I've given a 4 out of 10. It's an easy game. It really is. I would recommend this to children, probably. Um, honestly, I'd like to see a difficulty setting, maybe 
randomly spawns more enemies. Nothing's randomly generated in this game. Once you've been to the bear cave, uh, you know where it is forever. So, not, not really much replayability either. Uh, and that's what's coming up next at a 1 out of 10. Yes, kind of harsh, maybe, but I stand behind it. There's no level up system, no inventory, no customization. It's really difficult to recommend it as a replayable game. So 1 out of 10. Innovation, I've given a 3 out of 10. It's a platformer. We've seen things like this before. I do appreciate that they mixed up the levels and... That was a bit innovative, I suppose, for a platforming game. Uh, to feature some puzzling aspects and then some like solo stealthy kind of action Not really stealthy solo solo action action <laughs> Anyways three out of ten for the animation on the aesthetic side got the graphics at the five out of ten I think it was ingenious to make them cavemen. It feels like I'm running across a cave wall However, it still feels a little bit ramshackle a little bit sloppy I'd like to see it polished um, a tiny bit more. But it does look like cave paintings, to be fair. So I put it about average. Um, it's, it's what I might expect from an indie studio. Acceptable from an indie studio. So, 5 out of 10. The music I've given a 6 out of 10. I would like for it to be a little more acoustic, organic. There's obviously a lot of overuse of synth pads, especially in this song we're listening to right now. But it still sort of fits the mood. I decided to give the music a 6 out of 10. It is above average, so not bad there. The sound effects. There are none in this game whatsoever. Zero. Goose egg. If you can't be asked to put sounds in your game, any sounds in your game, in 2015, then I can't be asked to give it a score. The story I've given a 4 out of 10. It's not exactly innovative or interesting, but it definitely moves things along. And I appreciate that they put one. So, 4 out of 10 for the story. A little bit up below the average. Level design I've given a 7 out of 10. There is a lot to explore and all the different gameplay modes of the, the various levels keeps things fresh and interesting throughout the playthrough, which took me about two hours, so not too bad at all. Um, but the tactics are a little bit disappointing, especially with the two brothers, unfortunately. Um, yeah, one can just block. And then the little brother by himself is just like a doom machine anyways. I love, I love watching him like kill guards and leap through the fucking shadows and shit. That's the best part of the game, in my opinion. Worth $5? I don't think so. $2 at the most. Um, that seems about fair to me. Stone Tales totals out at a 40 out of 100. That is a flat 2 out of 5 stars. Scored a little bit behind Shiplord. I think if it had some sound effects, maybe it would have come in a bit above. But yeah, look at this boss fight. Boom! Such strategy. Yeah, not the best thing I've ever seen. But if you want to add this game to your library, please leave a comment. I do have one extra copy, and I'll randomly draw somebody on next Wednesday. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and or share on social media if you did enjoy. And until the next time, friends. Bye bye One, two... Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.